Hello, it's Susan Duclo with All News Pipeline. It's October 6, 2014. We're going to take a look at three articles here real quick, and then we're going to take a look at some very, very strange coincidences. And at the end of this, being that I'm not a scientist or in the medical profession, we're going to ask some questions. I'm not going to assert that any of this is fact, but these are questions that the mainstream media should be asking. And they're not. In fact, nobody is putting these connections together. So let's start with the doctor successfully treated for Ebola. Has been hospitalized again. Now, the Massachusetts doctor and missionary who was successfully treated for Ebola, he contracted in Africa, is back in the hospital with what appears to be a respiratory infection. Keep that in mind, respiratory infection. They don't suspect a recurrence of the virus. They're talking about the Ebola, Ebola virus. Now, UMass... Memorial Medical Center said in a statement, Dr. Richard Sacra was hospitalized Saturday for observation. He's in stable condition. He has a cough conjunct and conjunctivitis, commonly known as pink eye. No. I ran across another one that sort of made me start thinking along these lines. A child died by the Enterovirus 68, which has been spreading across America. I believe since August and pink eye was the only symptom the child suffered it says a New Jersey preschooler killed last month by a respiratory virus that is spreading across the US showed symptoms only of pink eye before he died in his sleep four-year-old Eli Waller of Hamilton Township was kept home from school by his mother on Wednesday September 23rd because he was developing a little bit of pink eye now he was a triplet. He went to bed and he never woke up. Between the time his mom put him to bed by Wednesday night and when she went to wake him up on Thursday morning, he passed. He had no other symptoms whatsoever. Now, the third article that caught my attention was 11th child in Colorado is treated for virus-related paralysis symptoms. The virus they're talking about is the EV-68 says it right here. Now EV-68 is still being called rare and we're going to get to another link which shows on the CDC website it's already in 43 states and Washington DC and they expect it to show up in more states when the testing is complete. Now those three I put together now look at polio. The What we're going to look at is symptom commonalities here. For polio, this is on healthline.com. All of these links will be hyperlinked in the article associated with this video, by the way. So you can click, you can look for yourself and see all of this, put it together and see what you come up with. Now, the polio symptoms are headache, sore, red throat, slight fever, vomiting, and general discomfort. Now, everybody knows that in polio, a small number of cases come up with paralysis too. and just as the EV-68 is attacking children, polio too, children younger than five years old are more likely to contract this virus than any other group. Now for EV-68, symptoms are fever, runny nose, sneezing, cough, body and muscle aches, and severe symptoms may include wheezing and difficulty in breathing. Now, as I promised, CDC website again, from mid-August to October 3rd, 538 people have confirmed EV-68. It's in 43 states in the District of Columbia, and it states down below in this, which they just added, is EVD-68 has been detected in specimens from four patients who have died and had samples submitted for testing. Now it also says something here somewhere about the paralysis but you can go ahead and you can read this I'll put it in there that's not the focus of uh, this right here now also take a look at the symptoms for Ebola which we now have the first case here hundreds are being tested despite the fact that we probably won't see more from that one case for at least another week or two because the symptoms don't manifest themselves for two to 
to 21 days. So the symptoms here, look again, fever, headache, muscle pain, weakness, diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal stomach pain, and unexplained hemorrhage, bleeding, or bruising. Now, and here again, exactly what I just told you, symptoms may appear anywhere from 2 to 21 days after exposure, but the average is 8 to 10 days. Now, there's another thing that came to mind when I saw these, these symptoms of Ebola. And that's an article I read back in June, which I hunted down. American scientists controversially recreate the deadly Spanish flu. Now, in this article, they say that researchers are denouncing this research as foolhardy and dangerous because they're genetically engineering this virus. And if it were to escape, either deliberately or accidentally from the laboratory, cause a deadly influenza pandemic. Now let's take a look at the symptoms from the Spanish flu. Here we go. Fatigue, fever, headache again, severe cough with such force that some even tore their abdominal muscles and here's the kicker. Foamy blood exited from their mouths and noses. Now all these symptom commonalities. Now a lot of people might say, oh, when they're experimenting with these, they are kept under careful watch and contained and there's no chance of getting out but let's take a look at the US Today article from September of 2014 where they discovered that just in 2012 and 2013 1100 lab incidents occurred but let's take a look at some of these okay the scientists wearing space suit like protective gear searched for hours in May for a mouse which was infected with a virus similar to Ebola during the same month St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, again with the children, a lab worker suffered a cut while trying to round up escaped ferrets that had been infected with a deadly strain of avi avian influenza. Now we go to another article here, and sure enough, scientists are playing around with the H1N1 virus, which is the avian flu. Now back to this doctor and the child that died and the paralysis leaves us with some questions here the questions are have these psychopaths mixed and matched more deadly pathogens than have been reported on in the mainstream media or i mean whether it's deliberate whether they've omitted it or whether they just didn't know second question have they created the perfect killer to call the population where symptoms manifest themselves differently depending on the host. And three, was this done deliberately? Now, I see three options here. I see one, it was deliberate. Two, they played around with deadly viruses and they lost control. And three, I could be wrong. I admit that, I could be wrong. And all of these symptom commonalities, including the timing, the spread, the mortality rate, the lab accidents, are all a huge pile of coincidences. I'm gonna leave that for you to decide.